if you don't mind, let's let's begin our conversation with the uh, uh, with the winning of the election by Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu just a couple of short months ago. Uh, how are things in Israel now? Well, look, and in, in right now in Israel, there's a great deal of concern uh, because of this deal that you've had uh, that was just signed in Vienna with Iran. Remember, we are not at the negotiating table there. Uh, the Israelis were not at the table, which is very different, I should say, than what happened with the negotiations over the deal with North Korea that ended up being a terrible deal. But one of the things about those negotiations is that your Japanese and your South Korean allies, they were at the negotiating table with you. So those countries that were most vulnerable and most endangered by a potential deal with North Korea, they were there and they were actually supportive of the deal. And they were telling uh, uh, the Bu- the Clinton administration first, and then the Bush administration. Both of them had dealings with North Korea to go ahead and do the agreements they did. In this case, the international powers were sitting with Iran. Israel was not there. The Arab states were not there. Your allies in the region, those who are most endangered and most vulnerable to what is being decided, are not there. And we both uh, strongly oppose what has been decided. And within Israel, there's very very strong. I wouldn't say it's unanimous, but it's about as close as you get. Our Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee met, and 30 of its 33 members said this is a bad deal that has usually negative consequences for Israel's security. The prime minister and the head of the opposition, uh, Bougie Herzog, Prime Minister Netanyahu, both of them together, both think that this is a bad deal. I don't remember an issue that has united Israelis so much. Uh, and I don't remember an issue where Israel is united with the Arab world. And when you're, when Israelis and Arabs are on the same page, that happens once a century. People should pay attention and ask themselves why your allies are telling you that this is a very bad deal, because it is a very bad deal. So from the other side, we hear Secretary of State John Kerry, who is, uh, uh, who is saying that uh, Israel, Israel is safer today than they were before this accord. Uh, this 169 pages of, uh, of, of agreement, what, what makes Israel less safe in your mind? What makes it less safe is that this deal does not block Iran's path to the bomb. It paves Iran's path to the bomb. And this is the central disagreement that we have with the administration. What they have said is that this this deal resolves the issue of Iran's nuclear weapons program, that it blocks it. And that's not true. The best that can be said about this is that if Iran does not violate the deal, which has become a big if because of the, all the holes in the agreement, it would this deal would temporarily block Iran's path for a decade. But after a decade, when the constraints that are being put in place by this deal, when the major constraints are removed, In 15 years, virtually all the serious constraints are removed. It actually pays Iran's path to the bomb because it allows Iran to legally have a massive enrichment uh, capacity to enrich uranium. It makes them a threshold nuclear state. And virtually all of the people in Israel, the political and security leadership, believe that this deal paves Iran's path to the bomb. And that's why we think it's so dangerous. Because what we believe, also our neighbors believe, and that's why they may rush to get nuclear uh, programs of their own. And a good faith effort, and we have no doubt that this is a good faith effort of the president and Secretary Kerry and everybody else on their team who did a lot of work on this deal, a good faith effort to prevent one regime from getting nuclear weapons, Iran, could lead to actually not only Iran getting nuclear weapons, but to the nuclearization of the entire Middle East. And people will say, well, a decade's not bad. Well, A decade may be a long time in the life of politics, but it's a blink of an eye in the life of a nation. A blink of an eye. And when we know that in 10 years we're going to have an Iran that can be a greater sponsor of terror than it is today, that can be a greater aggressive aggressor in the region than it is today, that can be a greater threat to Israel and America than it is today, and they'll be on automatic pilot to having all these constraints that this deal is putting in place, on automatic pilot to have those constraints removed, that's a very bad deal. There's no linkage whatsoever between this deal and a change in the behavior of the Iranian regime. And that's one of the core problems here, and that's why we think this is so uh, dangerous. We appreciate that the president the Secretary of State think that it makes Israel safer. Those people who are ultimately responsible for the security of my country and Israel, they all believe it makes Israel much, much less safe, that it endangers Israel, and in fact it could threaten the survival of the one and only Jewish state. 
Three years ago, there was conversation and can, uh, conversations at a high level uh, being had about uh, strikes against uh, nuclear facilities. As a matter of fact, uh, I, uh, Israel did it uh, back in 1981. Uh, are, are you to the point to where, uh, to where Israel, to where you think that Israel could and would move forward on its own uh, to, to strike against these nuclear facilities? Look, Israel always retains the right uh, to defend itself. We cannot allow a regime that openly calls and actively works for our destruction to develop nuclear weapons. We cannot allow that to happen. And we now have a deal which actually ultimately paves the path for that to happen. But Israel doesn't seek war with anybody. We don't seek a military confrontation with Iran that is dangerous. We don't want a nuclear-armed Iran. We don't want either of those options. Uh, and we, we would like to see this issue peacefully resolved through diplomacy. But our goal is a diplomatic agreement that actually resolves the issue, not a diplomatic agreement that delays the issue for a few years and then gives them this path to the bomb, but one that resolves the issue. And this deal doesn't do it. It represents huge dangers to our security also in the short term because you've taken a regime in Iran that's the preeminent sponsor of terrorism in the world. You're giving them a huge infusion of cash, over 100, maybe $150 billion in the next few months. Now, Iran has a $400 billion economy. To give Iran $150 billion is like about $8 trillion going to the U.S. Treasury. Iran is not going to use all that money to build new cancer research centers in Tehran or to have a GI Bill for returning members of the Revolutionary Guard. They're going to use a good chunk of that money, could be tens of billions of dollars, for the Shia militias in Iraq, for Assad's regime in Syria that's killed over 200,000 people, to the Hezbollah terror organization in Lebanon, to Palestinian terror groups in Gaza, to the Houthis in Yemen, to what they're doing in Libya and in other states throughout the region to destabilize it. So we have just made, this deal would make Iran a much richer terrorist regime. And so we're going to have huge security problems in the short term with the, the threat of conventional conflict, and then in the long term, we have the worst threat of all, which is the potential of a terrorist regime arming itself with nuclear weapons and the nuclearization of the Middle East, which is a nightmare for everybody. You had mentioned this possibly sparking an arms race. Um, aren't, aren't we possibly there already? I mean, it has been rumored that Israel has an undeclared uh, nuclear program, not a part of the non-proliferation uh, proliferation, uh, treaty. Uh, Saudi Arabia the same. You have another uh, powerhouse in Turkey uh, that has access uh, has the arms race not already begun? There hasn't been an arms race in the Middle East. I don't want to respond to your allegations. There's been allegations uh, for a long for a long time, but we have not seen powers in the region race ahead to get nuclear weapons. The Saudi Arabia does not have nuclear weapons. Egypt does not have nuclear weapons. Turkey uh, does not have nuclear weapons. But if they see that Iran is on a path towards nuclear weapons, that would actually spark the arms race. Up until this point, they haven't done that. They haven't done that. And that should tell you something. But if they see that a deal is made that makes Iran have a legal nuclear program today, and an, a restricted one, albeit, but an unrestricted nuclear program tomorrow, if they believe that Iran has now developed a path to get a nuclear weapon, they're going to get nuclear uh, programs of their own. And I think that you'd see that happen very quickly, which is why this, this deal is so problematic and why we hope it will be opposed. You know, you had talked about a diplomatic solution to this uh, to this problem. Uh, it's 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 no secret the fact that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu does not have a good relationship with uh, uh, with the Obama administration, and and it seems vice versa. Uh, if in fact that relationship were stronger, uh, could that could that have gotten us to a different end on this deal? Look, I think we have a different policy than the United States. Uh, Israel's policy from the beginning was to prevent Iran from developing a nuclear weapons capability. That was our policy. What the American policy, the stated position, has been for years is we're going to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Uh, and what this deal does is perhaps prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon for a few years. But in exchange for giving them that path, after a few years, to them to get nuclear weapons. And this is a major difference in policy between the two governments. It's not a question of personality. It's a question of policy. The president and the prime minister have worked together on many issues. 
And Israel is also appreciative of the many things that President Obama has done to strengthen Israel's security. Some of those things are known. Some of those things are not known. So we appreciate that, and we've worked together, and I've been present at all of their meetings together and all their conversations that they've had together. There are many things that they've done, and they work together to meet common challenges. The problem we have is this is the most important issue for the state of Israel. It's an, Iran represents an existential threat to Israel, a threat to our very survival. And we have a different policy from the United States where we have this issue being the number one foreign policy priority of the president of the United States. That's a big deal. And a threat to the survival of Israel, which is a very big deal. And we have a disagreement on what the impact that this deal is going to make. Uh, when the president of the United States says that this deal makes Israel safer and it makes America safer, I believe that he's being sincere. That's what he believes. We have a very different view. Israelis across the spectrum have a different view from left and right. And Israel, has, and Israel and the Arabs share the same view, that in our collective judgment, this deal is going to make the problem much worse, not better. It's a difference of policy, not a difference of personalities. There is talk of uh, Congress wanting to dismantle uh, this policy uh, to, uh, to take apart this 169 pages. Uh, however, the president has already uh, promised to veto any work uh, by the U.S. Congress on that. Uh, do you feel then that that ultimately this will move forward? And if so, what is the next step for Israel? Well, look, we're we're making our case. I'm making a case uh, through you. I'm making a case to members of Congress. I'm making clear to them how Israel sees this. I know there are people who are telling them that this make Israel, makes Israel safer. I'm Israel's ambassador to the United States, and I'm saying quite clearly it doesn't make Israel safer. It threatens us in a way that we have not been threatened for many, many decades. So I'm making that case to members of Congress through the media and everything else. Uh, and we hope that when people look at this, they'll understand that this thing is very dangerous for Israel, very dangerous for your allies in the region, and ultimately is going to be very dangerous for the United States. Because remember, uh, to Iran, we are the little Satan. America is the great Satan. I think your listeners should understand that four days before this deal was signed, four days, the president of Iran, Rouhani, went to a rally where they were shouting death to America and death to Israel, when they were burning American and Israeli flags. This didn't happen 40 years ago. It didn't happen four years ago. It happened four days ago. That should tell you what you need to know about a regime that has killed and responsible for the death and murder and maiming of thousands of American soldiers of the Marines who were killed in Beirut, of all the soldiers who were hit by those roadside bombs in Iraq and in Afghanistan, and by acts of terror throughout the world. This is the same regime, and the regime has not changed. The deal was supposed to be dismantle the sanctions and we'll dismantle your pro. If you dismantle your program, I should say, we will dismantle the sanctions. And what has been done now is the international community is dismantling the sanctions regime but they are leaving this nuclear program in place, constrained for a few years, but unconstrained after that. That's very, very dangerous to all of us. To that point, if this moves forward, I know that there are conversations about additional uh, additional dollars being spent in the uh, in the region. Three billion dollars in aid going to Israel right now. Most of that going uh, in military uh, talks. Of that going to four point two to four point five billion dollars. Uh, in uh, in in aid and again for uh, additional security, is that enough? At this, if in fact this moves forward, look, we very much appreciate the great support that we have from the United States. We have no better friend and ally than the United States uh, in the world. The depth and breadth of uh, this relationship that we have is is truly remarkable. It's one of the most remarkable alliances, not only that you have, but probably that any two countries have ever had. We also think that you have no better friend than Israel in the Middle East, a very dangerous Middle East. You have a solid, reliable, democratic ally who you can rely on, who shares your interests, who shares your values, and just wants the ability to defend itself. And we appreciate all the support that we've had. Right now, we are making clear that the deal that was just signed really endangers fundamentally the security of Israel. And as for what will happen when we move forward, we'll have to have that discussion then. We'll have to see how this plays out over the next 60 days, what will happen in Congress. And then I'm sure we're going to continue 
uh, to work together, regardless of what happens, because the Middle East is a very dangerous place. We think this deal will make it infinitely more dangerous. But if you don't have this deal, the Middle East will remain a dangerous place. And I think the U.S. and Israel are going to have to work together to meet common challenges. And not our relationship, contrary to what people believe, is going to get even stronger in the years and decades ahead so that we can work together to defend our common uh, security. Ambassador, I, I appreciate your thoughts. I appreciate your uh, education on this. And uh, as you had mentioned, uh, we will have to wait and see what happens as this moves through Congress, uh, maybe in the maybe in the course of time here, another 60, another 90 days uh, down the road, uh, we can continue this conversation and uh, and see truly if we can if we can change the minds of this administration. Thank you. Thank you.